I am Joy Lavanes Nava. And I am Christine Garay Onoya. And, and we, we are your, your reporters, reporters for tonight. tonight. So, good evening, everyone. Today we are going to discuss the role of technology in delivering the curriculum. And in this video, the desired learning outcomes are the following. First, discuss the rules of technology in curriculum delivery. Identify the factors and technology selection, including the use of visual aids. So, let's start with our topic for today. First, let us define what does technology mean in this topic. Technology here in instructional media, media technology or simple learning technology, which is an umbrella term that describe communication, information, and technological tools to enhance teaching and learning experience. So in short, it is the use of technology for the purpose of education. And in this instructional or learning technology can be classified into projected and non-projected media. So what are the difference between these two? Non-projected media technology are those media technology na hindi na kailangang gumamit ng technology para magamit ng isang teacher. Say for examples, real objects, models, field trips, kits, printed materials like books, textbooks, and etc. At kung ang non-projected media ay hindi na kailangan gumamit ng projection materials para magamit, iba naman ang projected media. Ito ay nangangailangan ng technology para magamit ng isang guro in delivering her lesson. Say for examples, we have overhead transparency, slides, film trips, films, video, VCD, and DVD, and etc. So, ang mga gamit na ito ay nangangailangan ng technology para magamit ni teacher. So, pero take note po na itong dalawang ito na uri ng media ay pwede namang magamit ni teacher. Wala naman pong mali kung alin ang gamitin niya as long as makatutudong sa lesson niya. So, let's come now to the factors on choosing technology selection. Before choosing the technology that you will use, you need to consider the factors on choosing it. The first one is practicality. So what does it mean? It means that before choosing the technology that you will use in delivering your lessons, you should ask yourself, is the equipment materials available? Kailangan mo munang alimin kung ang technology ba na gagamitin mo ay magagamit mo anytime at available. You should also ask yourself how much will it cost in acquiring that specific equipment. Kailangan mong alamin kung kaya ba ng budget ng paaralan nyo, kaya ba na masustentohan ang technology ng gagamitin mo in delivering the curriculum. The second one is appropriateness of the media technology with relation to the learners. Before you are going to use a specific media technology, you should also ask yourself, ito bang media technology na ito na gagamitin ko ay suitable sa aking mga estudyante or ang media technology bang ito ay maaaring maging source of education ng isang students o can be a source of plain amusement or entertainment lang. Say for examples, you want to project a film for your students. Kasi gusto mong matuto sila. Uh, mas maintindihan nila yung lesson na um, i-deliver mo sa pamamagitan ng film na yun. Kailangan mo munang i-consider before using it kung ang film bang yun ay magpibigay sa kanila ng lesson or entertainment. The third one is activity or suitability. Before you are going to use a specific media technology, you should consider that media technology will fit the instructional event that result either in formation, motivation, or psychomotor display. And the last one factor that you should consider is the objective matching. Overall, you should think that the technology that you are going to use really has a connection or really can fulfill the objectives you have set in specific lesson. And that technology will match to the lesson that you are going to use. 
kailangan mo muna ang i-consider kung ang technology pang yun ay magmamatch sa lesson na i-deliver mo para mas maging um, kapangkipakinabang ang technology yung gagamitin mo at maunawaan ng mga mag-aaral ang lesson na ibibigay mo sa kanila. The role of technology and delivering the curriculum. It can easily be observed that technological innovation in the multifarious field of commerce, science, and education is fast developing such that it is difficult to foresee the technological revolution in the millennium. But presently, we can identify three currently trends that could carry on to nature of education in the future. The first trend is the paradigm shift from teacher-centered to student-centered approach to learning. Okay, teacher-centered learning is the more traditional or conventional approach the teacher function in the familiar role of class room lecturer presenting information to the student who are expected to possibly receive the knowledge being presented the second trend is the broadening realization that education is not simply a delivery of facts and information but an educative process of cultivating the cognitive affective psychomotor and much more the contemplative intelligence of the learners of the new ages in this trend it says that we need to become wider that education is not simply a delivery of facts and information but an educative process of developing or prepare the cognitive and affective psychomotor and much more the contemplative the third trend and possibly the more explosive trend is the increase in the use of new information and communication technology and this trend we can't stop the increase in the use of gadgets teacher and student is now using it especially in this time of pandemic at hindi natin mapipigilan ang revolution ng teknolohiya sa mga susunod pang henerasyon let's come now to the primary role of educational technology and delivering the school curriculums instructional program have been identified first upgrading the quality of teaching and learning in school dito kinakailangan natin ma-develop ang ating pagtuturo ating mga mag-aaral at mas maging makalidad ang ating pagtuturo sumunod next one is increasing the capability of the teacher effectively inculcate learning and for student to gain mastery of lesson and courses and this the teacher is increasing the capability to instill knowledge to someone or to somebody for student to gain mastery of lesson and courses. Next one is broadening the delivery of education outside school through non-traditional approaches to formal and informal learning such as open universities and lifelong learning to adult learners in this um expanding the delivery of education outside school through non-traditional approaches to formal and informal learning what is formal and informal learning formal learning is learning that is delivered in a systematic and inten intentionally way informal learning is on the other end of the spectrum it's unstructured often unintended and it occurs outside of a conventional learning setting such as open universities and lifelong learning to adult 
learners. Next one is revolutionizing the use of technology to boost educational paradigm shift that give importance to teacher-centered to holistic learning. Technology and education is a debatable topics in society. There are a large number of positive and negatives to education technology. But slowly, as the technology was welcomed by the educational institutes, they understand the significance of technology in education. And its positives outnumbered the negatives. And now, with the technology, education has taken a whole new shape that it leaves us with no doubt that our educational system has been transformed owing to the ever-advancing technology. Primary rules are based on the framework of technology-driven teaching and learning called TPAC, which stand for Technological Knowledge, Pedagogical Knowledge, and Content Knowledge. So, yung nag-design ng framework na ito ay naniniwala na ang tatlong ito ay mayroong interconnectedness at ang mga question na mababanggit dito ay kailangang i-consider ng isang teacher bago siya mag-deliver ng, kan- ng content ng lessons. So, the first question is, what shall I teach? Ano yung ituturo ko? Ano yung content na i-deliver ko sa mga estudyante ko na mas makakatulong sa kanila in developing their skills. The second one is how shall I teach the content? Paano ko ituturo ang content na ito? Ano yung gagawin ko para mas maging kapakipakinabang at mas maintindihan ng mga estudyante ko ang ituturo kong content sa kanila? The last one is what technology will I use in order to teach the content? Anong technology ba? ang magmamatch sa ituturo kong content. Ano bang technology ang gagamitin ko para i-deliver ko yung mga lessons sa aking mga mag-aaral? Okay. Let's come now to the criteria for the use of visual aids. Learners say we learn 83% through the use of sight compared with less effective ways to learn. Hearing, uh, 10%, smell with 4%, touch with 2%, and taste with 1%. And the use of visual for a wide range of material. There are basic principles of basic designs. Assess of visual materials of presentation, a transparency or slide using the following criteria. Number one, lettering style or font. For the second one, number of lettering di- style. Number three, use of capitals. Short titles or headlines should be no more, no more than six words. For the four, fourth, lettering colors. It must be easy to see and read. Use of contrast is a good for emphasis. Number five, lettering size. Good visibility even for student at the back of classroom may see the for number nine, the appeal, unusually unusual and catchy, have two dimensional, interactive, and use of overlays are or movable flaps for the last one the use of directionals presentation for the sixth spacing between letters it must be equal and even spacing must be equal for the seventh spacing between lines it must be not too close as to blur at a distance for number eight Number of lines, the number of lines is no more than and no more than eight lines of text and each transparency or slide. For the use of directional for devices, we 
use like for example the arrows bold letters bullets contrasting color and size especially placement of an item